In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. So, like Abuna was saying yesterday, we talked about how faith helps us to understand. There's this imagery that came into my mind that I want to share with you. How many, how many of you have been to uh, Disneyland or World Disney? Yes. Now, or some of the parks, I guess, where when you go in, there are some of these shows where as you come in, they give you these glasses. They're called what? That's right. They're called 3D glasses. And you can sit and watch the show, but it will be so flat and you won't be, you won't be able to make sense of the show and why people are laughing and why, why people are, are screaming if you don't put on the 3D glasses. With faith we understand. Sometimes without these glasses of faith, life seems so flat. But when we put these glasses on and we look at situations through these 3D glasses, i.e. faith glasses, we make sense and we understand how things, how things are going and what is happening. That's, that was yesterday. With, with faith, we understand. Today, I want to talk to you about with faith, we offer. Bil iman bin addim. هو تلاقي غالبا اللي حصل انه ادم وحواء علموا اولادهم موضوع التقدمه والذبيح عرفوها منين ادم وحواء دي اتعلموها من ربنا لان اول حاجه حصلت لما سقطوا وتعروا انه ربنا على طول ذبح حيوان واخذ جلد هذا الحيوان وغطى بيه ايه ادم وحواء ف يمكن ده مش مكتوب لكن يمكن يكون ده التقليد اللي سلمه آدم لقايين وهابيل إنه لما تحبوا ترضوا ربنا لازم تعملوا إيه؟ تذبحوا ذبيحة. So Adam taught his children to offer sacrifice. And came the day when Cain and Abel were scheduled to offer their sacrifice, whether it be because they came to a certain age and as the Bible says, Abel looked for the best animal. He, he chose the best animal amongst the sheep, but Cain took from the ground. So what's the big deal? The ground is good too. No, because God cursed the ground. He cursed the ground. And Abel took this animal offered the best because the Bible says Cain brought an offering an offering just any offering he brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord Abel also brought but he brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fats Abel presented the best Cain just presented just offered and the Bible says, And the Lord respected Abel's offering, but he did not respect Cain. In Arabic, it says he looked upon. نظر لإيه؟ لتقدمة هبيل بس ما نظرش لتقدمة قايين نظر يعني إبل يعني عجبته يعني فرح قلبه لما شاف إيه؟ تقدمة هبيل ايه يعني اقدم لك من الخرفان ولا اقدم لك من الارض فيها ايه يعني هو انت يعني يا رب هتفرق معاك انا اقدم ايه يقول لا هي ما تفرقش هتقدم ايه بس المهم هتقدم ازاي بس هي دي النقطه اللي قدامنا تقدم بالايمان ولا تقدم كما لقوم ايه هابيل قدم بالايمان انما قايين قالوا له قدم فراح ايه؟ ما قدم قالوا له روح الكنيسه راح قالوا له اقف صلي صلى قالوا له لازم تركع ركع قالوا اي حاجه يقولوها له هو يعملها وخلاص لكن فين الايمان؟ 
قايين ما قدمش بإيمان. Faith is seen in what you offer. A measure of your faith is what you offer. The type of offering shows exactly what type of faith you have. If the offering is the best, that probably shows that your faith is strong. If the offering that you come and present to the Lord is some of what you have, or is the least of what you have, and we're not talking money here, so although some of the examples I'll give are monetary, but I'm referring to any type of offering, your time, your family, your children, any type of offering, your service. The first deed of faith is the type of faith that offers. There are those who offer their lives. We call them what in the church? Martyrs. Yes. And there are those who offer their health and their time, like the servants who are committed in their service. And there are those who offer their mind. And there are those who offer their money. There's a saying that goes, Give God according to your income. Lest God make your income according to your giving or to your offering. There was this man who came and he gave a vow to the church and to the priests. It's an imaginary story, I would assume. And he said, Father, I want to give 10% of everything I earn. The priest was very happy. He said, that's good. He said, how much do you earn per week? He said, forty dollars. He said, that's okay. Four dollars a week. And the more he gave his 10%, the more the Lord gave him. To a point where he had to start paying close to $400 per week. So he came to Abuna and said, Abuna, can you please pray for me that I may be freed of that vow? Because now I can't afford paying all the 10%. So Abuna said, I cannot free you from the vow, but I can pray that God may bring you back to the $40 per week. Maybe that would be easier. What do you offer? There are those who offer their children for consecration and for dedication to the service of the Lord. What is it that you and I offer? Think of it personally. أهو قايين قدم أي حاجة لكن هبيل قدم أفضل حاجة عنده ربنا بص للقلب لقى قلب هبيل مليان بالإيه بالإيمان بص القلب قايين قال له خلي بالك في حد بيخبط على باب قلبك إيه اللي بيخبط قال له في خطية في خطية رابضة إيه على الباب قايين في حاجة غلط انت انت كده بتقدم اي كلام انت 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 ما عندكش حب ليا اهو تقدمه وخلاص اذا كنا بنقول ان احنا نؤمن بربنا يبقى لازم يكون تقدمنا او تقدمتنا توري الايمان دو بص كده ايه الحاجات اللي بنقدمها لربنا نيجي كده نصحى الصبح أول حاجة نعملها إيه نقدم إيه؟ صلاة. ده بيسم... دي دي إيه البكورة يعني the first the first born of your day. بدل ما الواحد يصحى وأول حاجة يعملها إيه؟ يجري يدخل في إيه؟ في الدوامة بتاعة اليوم. ربنا بيقول لك هل ممكن تقدم لي بكورة اليوم بتاعك؟ هل ممكن تقدم لي بكورة الصحة بتاعتك؟ ولا في ناس يقول لك إيه؟ خليني أتمتع بإيه بحياتي كده هو وأنا شاب لما أكبر لما أكبر ربنا بيقول لأ أنا عاوز إيه؟ عاوز أفضل ما عندك عاوز أفضل مالك وعاوز أفضل وبكورة أولادك عشان كده الإنجيل يقول أو الباي بولس الرسول يقول إيه؟ إنه ربنا لما بص لهابيل قال إن هو إيه؟ He is righteous. Righteous. لأن القلب من جوا كان نظيف. It was what he believed, not what he brought or offered. 
It's his faith that produced the offering. Cain went through the motion, but no motives and no trust. Cain wasn't rejected because of his, of his offering, but like some people say, his offering was rejected because of Cain. God looked at the heart and said, no, this is not going to work out. No matter what you get from the ground, your heart is what I desire, and that is what your brother was able to give. Let's look at some examples. Look at Abraham. Abraham's offering. What did Abraham offer? He offered his only son, son of the promise. Come on God, I've waited for the son for many years. You told me this is the son of the promise, the covenant. This is the son from whom I will have so many people. Abraham, I want you to offer your best. What is your best? Apparently at that time the best was Isaac. And so God said, bring me your own son. What does Abraham do? He, he obeys, but how? It's about the how. It's not about just doing. It's not about going through the motion. What does the Bible say? Abraham woke up early. Abraham, take it easy. You can go in the afternoon. You don't have to be so enthusiastic about killing your son. He's not that bad of a teenager. Hmm? But Abraham wakes up early. Why? His heart is full of faith. If I'm going to offer, I'm going to offer the best with a heart full of faith. And he brings Isaac and presents him as an offering. So Abraham woke up early. And St. Paul said that Abraham lifted the knife with faith that God is able to bring back Isaac from the dead back to life. Abraham, did, did it ever happen before your time that anybody rose from the dead? No. This all the rising of the dead happened later on. But Abraham said, Isaac, I already received him from a dead womb. He came out of a dead womb. Therefore, God who is able to bring Isaac from the dead, He can also bring him back from the dead. And He offered His Son with faith. This is an example of how to offer the best. God doesn't want the little that we have. If God does not get the best, He is not satisfied. He wants the best. Like, the, like once one person said, if God is not valued above all, He is not valued at all. قلت له لا اختار الايه اختار الكبير انا عاوز اقدم لربنا احسن حاجه عندي تخيلوا كده لو جه ربنا قال انا عاوز ابنك ولا عاوز بنتك ولا ابنك او بنتك نقول له ايه نقول له لا استنى شويه ايه لما ايه اتمتع بيهم استنى شويه لكن الست دي قالت له ايه خد اعظم واحسن ولد في كل ايه في كل ولادي بتقدم بقلب مليان بالإيمان ده في قصة تانية حصلت والسيد المسيح نفسه علق عليها في قصة, قصة التقدمة كل واحد داخل الهيكل يحط فلوس ايه كتير وجات واحدة أرملة وضعت ايه في السين حد هنا شاطر في الماث شوية عشان يعني الموضوع ده عاوزين نحله المسيح سيد المسيح لو المجد قال ايه انها اعطت اكثر ازاي اكثر دول هم كلهم ايه في السين يعني mathematically speaking this widow did not give more than all the other people but God looks at the how how did she offer this widow gave all that she had gave from her needs but everybody else 
gives what's not needed because they have tons of it. But this woman, imagine with me, put yourself instead of this woman, putting all that you have for the day. How are you going to eat, lady? How about medicine? If you need to buy some medicine, how about the kids at home? You're a widow. He said, no, 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 no. I give with faith. If I put these two to the Lord, I know that the Lord will take care of me. And that's why when God looked at his off her offering, he said, she gave more. She gave more. The woman that you, who poured the ointment on Jesus, we, we read the gospel tonight. Everybody was so upset. But she did the best because she offered in faith. Actually, this gospel is read in the funerals of ladies, as if of mothers, so that we remember that they poured themselves for others. Do not disturb this woman, said the Lord. She offered a great offering of faith because she did this for my burial. Four days later, Jesus on the cross and buried. And it's said that these ointments, they stayed so strong on him. She offered with love and faith. Let's look at 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 8. St. Paul speaks of, speak of people who actually offered with great faith. Now I want to read you this passage. There was a starvation that happened in Jerusalem. So the people in Jerusalem needed money, they needed food. And St. Paul, as you know, was he, was he the servant of the Jews? Or did he actually serve the Gentiles? The Gentiles. لكن بولس الرسول يسمع في مجاعة في أورشليم مش يقول لا دي مش خدمتي لا أنا ما بخدمش في الحتة دي مش تبعي لا يقول إيه لا لازم نجيب الأكل ولازم نلم إيه فلوس لازم نجيب الأكل ولازم نهتم بالناس اللي في أورشليم ويكتب في كورنثوس الثانية كلمة على أهل كده اللي هم الماسدونيانز they offered to the Jews Macedonians non Jews they offered to the Jews. Look how they offered. You'll be amazed when you hear this. Moreover, brethren, we make known to you the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded in the, rich, in the riches of their liberality. For I bear witness that according to their ability, yes, and beyond their ability, they were freely willing, imploring us with much urgency that we, we would receive the gift and the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And not only as we had hoped, but they first gave themselves to the Lord and then to us by the will of God. I want to just stop at these points. How did the Macedonian offer? First, it says, in great trial of affliction. These people were in trial, they were in affliction, their situation was very bad, and they still offered. يعني في وسط الضيق وبرضه ايه؟ يقدموا. مش يقول لك لا انا حالي وحش. انا بس بس الدنيا تفتح معايا وبعد كده حد حقدر اخدم في الكنيسه. لا. الناس دي في وسط ضيقتهم ايه؟ قدموا. ما تقولش انا في ضيقه ولا انا في في وقت دلوقتي مش قادر ادي وقت لحد ولا مش قادر اخدم في الكنيسه ولا انا ظروفي الماديه مش قوي معلش انا لسه جاي جديد مش هقدر ادي لا الناس دي في وسط الضيقه قدموا ويقول ايه تاني يقول abundance of their joy these are people not only they gave in the middle of their sufferings and their hardships but they gave with joy very important for us to give with joy. And then what? It says, riches of their liberality. Means what? They gave generously. They didn't just give, you know, when you're told, oh, we have to, uh, to give to the poor, and you take out the checkbook and the pen, and then you think, hmm, how much should I put down? Huh? How much? Or when you're asked to do a service in the church, or you're asked to help somebody, you say, okay, like, how much would I be able to manage? These people gave with generosity. A rich, generous man once was asked, how come you keep giving to God and you're still rich? And he said, it's simple. 
I shovel towards God and God shovels towards me, but His shovel is bigger. And that's the difference. You give and the Lord give, gives back. They gave in their deep poverty. They started giving, St. Paul says, to the point because of their giving, they became poor. How many of us could do this? You give until you become poor. These people gave to Jerusalem until they started to need, have some, to need from others. They gave beyond their ability. Now some people say, this is all I could do. They freely and willingly gave. And then look at what, what St. Paul says. He said, not only did they give in hardship, not only did they give until they became poor, not only did they give with joy and generosity, not only did they, did they give freely and willingly and beyond their ability, but after they collected everything to go to Jerusalem, they implored St. Paul to come and take the offering. They said, please, we beg you, accept the offering. Not people offering and say, oh, I gave. Oh, I give them my time. Oh, I did this service. These people offered with humility. They said, please accept our offering because it is it's us who are benefiting, not the people in Jerusalem. And finally, why did they do all this? How did they learn to do this? St. Paul says, because first they gave themselves. First they said, God, everything in our hands, the homes that we own, the things in, in, in our banks, everything we have is not ours. This is really yours, Lord. We gave, you, gave us, we gave ourselves to you. And then it was easy for them to give the rest because they dedicated their hearts to God. How do we offer by faith? I want to go very quickly over these points. Two, think, these are characteristics of giving or offering with faith. Two, without and four, with. إيه الحاجات إيه مميزات العطاء بالإيمان إزاي أدي بالإيمان نفتكرهم كده حاجتين بدون وأربع حاجات ب إيه الاثنين اللي بدون أول حاجة بدون حساب تاني حاجة أنا هقولهم كلهم وبعدين نقولهم تاني بالإنجليش أول حاجة بدون حساب تاني حاجة بدون تردد يبقى اول حاجه ايه بدون حساب تاني حاجه بدون تردد دول الاثنين اللي, اللي ايه بدون بدون حساب بدون تردد without counting and without hesitation ثالث حاجه تدي ازاي تدي ازاي بايمان تدي بفرح تدي بحب تدي بحماس وتدي بتكريس يبقى تدي بايه بفرح تدي بحب تدي بحماس وتدي بايه بتكريس يبقى نقولهم تاني حك... ايه لما انا باجي ادي بايمان ست حاجات عطائي ده يكون بدون حساب وبدون تردد وباربع حاجات بايه بفرح بحب بحماس بايه بتكريس شوف بقى ايه موضوع تدي بدون حساب ما ينفعش تمشي بالكالكوليتر يعني يعني تقول انا اعطيت لربنا خمس ساعات النهارده كفايه لا when we give we give without counting i cannot say okay the the, the tithing the tithing i am going to give 10% father is it okay if i count the, the the price of gas that i put in my car to come to the church as part of my 10% uh, if I give to some of my family members who are not very rich, can I count this of my 10%? Doesn't work like this. We cannot keep counting. If I buy a spiritual book for $3, can I count it from the $1,000 that I have to give? 
it all counts, you know, it's gonna build up. No. You cannot give with counting, but you cannot give like that. But give with faith. So you have the faith that heaven is counting, so you stop counting. When I give, who's counting? God. Then I should what? Stop counting. Because the more I give, whether it be time, service, whether it be money, whatever I give, heaven is counting. Give without limit. The story is told of a beggar in India who used to sit and beg. And people would come and put some pennies or gold or, or some rice. They would give him rice to eat in his bowl. And all of a sudden he heard this huge commotion. So he heard there is, must be a prince coming to the palace. So he prepared himself. So probably this prince is going to give him some gold. So the prince came, got off his horse and went to the beggar. And the beggar, you know, begged. And the prince said, can I have some of your rice? The beggar said, no, I need money from you. You want rice from me? This is my only food. He said to him, please, I need some of your rice. He said to him, but if I give you my rice, what else would I eat by the end of the day? For the third time, the prince said, give me some rice. So the beggar took three rice, three, and gave it to him. And so the prince thanked him very much and took three pieces of gold and gave it back to the beggar. And the beggar thought to himself regretfully, why didn't I just pour my bowl of rice upside down in this man's hands? When we give, give without counting, because it is a promise from God that if we give, he opens what? He opens the heavens. The offering of faith is, a, is one without counting. Bidun hasab. Tani haga, ulna bidun e, bidun taradud, without hesitation. Someone may offer, then says, ah, oh, I put too much. Ah, oh, I helped this person too much. You get these questions sometimes from friends, how much, how far do I help someone with their homework? How do I do this? How far do I do that? Without hesitation. If you offer, don't regret. Someone may think, oh, like Ananias and Sapphira. No one told them to sell anything. But they went on their own will and they sold the field and brought the money and then they hesitated. Uh-oh, money looks good. Should we keep some? Yeah, but we want to be heard that we gave everything. So they kept some. What happened to them? They dropped dead. Why? The money was in your hand, like St. Peter said. The field was yours. If you offer, don't hesitate. Don't regret. Give with honesty. These people give without honesty. They think that the truth can be hidden. The truth can never be hidden. And the truth cannot be told in many different ways. You give, you give without hesitation, you give with all honesty. Some people think that truth can be, you know, that can be played with. There's a funny story about this man whose wife was traveling in Europe. And he was probably from Canada. We'll make him from Canada. And she called him a few weeks later and said, Hi, hubby, how are you? How's everybody? He said, everyone is good. How is the cat? He said to her, the cat died. What? cat died. He was a very dear cat to me. Why? Husband, why do you go straight ahead like this and tell it in my face? He said, well, the truth is the truth. I just have to say it straight. No, the wife said, when I called you from France, you should have said the cat went up the roof. When I called you from, uh, you know, Spain, you should have said, and the cat, you know, was walking on the roof. And then when I called you from England, you should have said, well, the cat just tripped and fell off the roof. And when I call you from Italy, then you should say the cat died. He said to her, I never heard that the truth should be said this way. I said to him, yeah, just the truth, you don't have to give it, you don't have to be honest like that. I said to him, okay, I learned. I said to him, and how is my mom? He said she went up the roof. <laughs> the, the truth cannot be told in many... There is one way to tell the truth. Although, 
interesting and funny. God, when we come to offer, we have to offer with honesty. We have to offer with no regrets. We have to offer with a heart of faith, full of faith, that this is the best, Lord, and it is the truth that this is the best. Number one, offer without counting. Two, offer without hesitation. Three, offer with joy. مهم أوي إن إحنا نقدم بفرح. مهم جدا نقدم بفرح. لما أجي أطلع من من جيبي كده ولا أطلع من حياتي ولا أقدم ابني أو بنتي أو أي أي تقدمة أقدمها لازم لو بتقدم بإيمان تتقدم بإيه؟ بفرح. أبا فرحان من قلبي جو. فرحان من قلبي جو. حصل كده مرة عندنا في الكنيسة. بنت يعني في كني في كنيسة يعني بنت صغيرة ما متى حبت تجربها يعني فعطتها دولار وعطتها ربع دولار عطتها كده two coins a dollar and a quarter وقالت لها قالت لها إيه شوفي بابا أنت واحدة تقدميها لربنا واحدة تخليها ليكي وحبت تشوف البنت حتقدم أني واحدة فيوميها في مدارس الأحد كان الكلام على المعطي المسرور يحبه ففي آخر اليوم الأم بقى شوف بقى بنتها عملت إيه؟ فقالت لها ها عطيتي إيه؟ قالت لها الحقيقة في الأول أنا كنت هحط الدولار وبعدين المس يعني السيرفنت قالت لي المعطي المسرور لقيت نفسي هفرح أكتر لما أحط الربع دولار فرحت حتى الربع دولار وخلت الدولار في إيه؟ في جيبها هل ده الفرح؟ لا الفرح بتاع الإيه؟ الآخرين حتى لو أنا هتعب شوية لكن غيري يفرح مش هو ده اللي المسيح عمله ترك مجده أخلى ذاته عشان مين يفرح عشان احنا نفرح فمش قليل مش كتير يعني لما انا مثلا اتعب شوية لأجل فرح الايه الاخرين مش فرح ذاتي اقدم بفرح I offer with joy, I offer with love. Very important that we offer with love. When you offer anything, when you come to serve, when you, you serve your own family, sometimes it's easier for us to serve the church. But when it comes to doing the dishes, it's a big deal. When it comes to doing cleaning up something in the house, it's a huge deal. Anywhere we offer, time, service, money, anything we do, we have to offer it because we love God first. And because I love Him, I also love my neighbor, I love others. So it has to be done with love. Love, you say, till, to what extent? I say love to the point that you would be willing to die, to put yourself down. The Lord said, there is no greater love than for a friend to put his life for his other friend. When a young boy needed some blood transfusion he had the type O blood and the only person who had the same at the time was his sister young sister and so they brought the sister they said we need your blood to give it to your brother so he can live the sister stopped for a little bit just began to think and then said to the doctor okay here they took the blood and they gave it to her brother and the sister was sitting frozen said to her they didn't know what was wrong with her then she turned to the doctor and said doctor when do I die when she said yes take my blood she thought they're gonna take all her blood to her brother and at that moment with that understanding she said yes this is the type of love to give willing to die like God, Jesus died for us, so we should do also with each other. This type of offering is an offering of faith. Huge faith. يبقى العطاء بالإيمان نقدم بإيمان العطاء ده يبقى أول واحد بدون حساب تاني حاجة بدون تردد تالت حاجة بفرح رابع حاجة بحب خمس حاجة نقول إيه بحماس بصوا كده هابيل ده كان مليان حماس وهو بيقدم الذبيحه لربنا لكن قايين 
يعني قدم اي حاجة كده وما كانش يعني قلبه مليان بالحماس الحماس ده يبان على طول يا ترى لما بمسك الانجيل وحقدم وقت ربنا اهو وقت مع انا اللي هستفاد في الاخر بس اهو يعني حقدم وقت ربنا يا ترى بمسك الانجيل بحماس وبتركه بحزن ولا بمسكه وانا هقرا الانجيل وبتركه بحماس يلا عشان اخلص اللي ايه اللي ورايا فين الحماس لما باجي الكنيسه ببقى كده متحمس ان انا اجي بدري قوي لاني نفسي كده اختبر ال- ال- الكلمه اللي قالها ربنا قال لي ايه اللي يبكروا الي ايه يجدونني باجي بحماس بقف في القداس بحماس لما بروح خدمه بيبقى الحماس اكتر ولا لما بقعد في البيت كده قدام التلفزيون مفتوح قدامي ومريح فين الحماس الحماس في العطاء يبقى العطاء ده بايه بايمان وقلنا برضو يكون بايه بتكريس to give with enthusiasm and to give also with consecration do you offer your heart in life first that's very important say lord everything in me and in my life is yours then the offering becomes just natural and consecrated first you say i belong to god then what you have belongs to God. Let me close by saying, St. Paul said something very beautiful, and this is the, the, the conclusion of these six points. He said what? I beseech you, therefore, I beg you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. This is it. You, the, the offering of faith is not presenting things, but is presenting me. The best offering that you can present is you. The best offering is that you present your heart, your mind. The Lord said, you go back to the commandments, He said, love your God from all. All what? All your heart, all your mind, all your strength. The best offering that I can give starts with me giving myself to God. Giving myself, giving my time, giving my thoughts, giving my preoccupations, giving my interests, giving my heart desire, giving everything that is me to Him. St. Paul says, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. This is the more excellent sacrifice of the New Testament, to give yourself. Believe me, God is not in need of my money. Believe me when I tell you, he's not in need of anything, but he wants me. He wants me. My son, give me your heart. I want you. You want me to fast, Lord? I will fast. You want me to stay up and pray? I will stay up and pray. Anything you want from my body is yours. Everything you want from my life is yours. I will sacrifice my body as an offering to you, knowing that when I lose myself, I actually what? I gain it. Losing myself, I actually gain it. Therefore, would you accept me, God? He says, God, yes, my arms are open. Come, I want you, and I want all of you. I don't want part of you. I don't want you to be a part-time Christian. You know, like that, some of these t-shirts that says 50% cotton, 20% polyester, but he doesn't want us 50% Christians, 20% atheists, 30% uh, secular. He doesn't want that. He wants us 100% his. And he will not be satisfied. There is no offering that can be given, such as the offering that you give your life, your family, yourself. What do we do? We do our best. Is offering something easy? So many things in this world take this offering away from us, but we do our best. I'm going to close with a very touching story. It touches my heart every time I say it and every time I hear it. But it shows how people can go very far to do their best to offer what they can. What, is God, what does God want? He wants you to offer yourself. That's what you can do. A story is told of a mother who was dying, who was 
diagnosed with a certain illness and the doctor told her you only have X amount of month. But this mother had a little child. And he was about seven years old, seven, eight. And the mother did not know how to break the story, you know, how to tell her son about this. So she went, uh, one time she was, she was obviously home, she was visited by the priest and she told him, Father, I want you to speak to my son. I want you to tell him. And so Abuna took this little seven, seven, eight year old son and told him, uh, listen, call him for the sake of the story, we'll call him Johnny. Listen, Johnny, uh, mom is going to travel. Travel? Yeah, mom is going to travel. Said, and she might, she traveling soon. Johnny said, when is she coming back? Abuna got stuck. He said to him, it was, you know, it was about midsummer. He said to him, you know, Johnny, when all the leaves in the, on the tree, they fall, it's around fall time, mom will leave. He said, is she coming back? He said, no, she won't be able to come back. So the son took the story and left. Three months later, the father visits the mother again, and it's fall. And she asked the father, did you talk to my son? She said, yes, I did. She said, I haven't been seeing him lately. Every time I look for Johnny, I can't find him. Can you look for him for me? So father, you know, got worried a little bit. He went around the house, couldn't find Johnny. Went out into the backyard to look. And here was Johnny on top of one of the trees trying to glue the leaves to the, to the tree so that they don't fall. What is Johnny doing? He's doing his best. He's not giving up. He is giving all that he can. All that he can offer, he is offering. When it comes to offering by faith, or faith helps us to offer, do like Johnny. Do what you can. Give yourself to God with faith. And God will look at that offering and say, that's all I needed. I wanted you. I wanted you. You give me yourself. Your offering is more excellent than any other offering. May God give us to do that and give ourselves to Him. Glory be to Him forever and ever. Amen.